As a young man in his 20s, George Washington was not yet the heroic figure we know and love today. True, he had already grown into the large, commanding frame so familiar to future generations of Americans, and by all accounts he was perfectly polished in polite society. Yet, as an officer in the British Army, he sought glory for himself above others. At 22, he resigned over complaints about his rank. He explained his decision in a letter to Colonel William Fitzhugh. I must be reduced to a very low command and subjected to that of many who have acted as my inferior officers. In short, every captain bearing the king's commission, every half-pay officer or other appearing with such commission would rank before me. How did this young man become the beloved father of his country, willing to risk his very life for a cause greater than himself? Stay tuned, it's the forging of George Washington on this episode of Bigfoot's Great American History Show. By the early 1700s, the Washington family had been in Virginia for four generations and had established a respectable family name through land speculation and tobacco farming. George was born in 1732, the eldest of his mother's six children and the fifth of his father Augustine's. This, of course, is the father whose favorite cherry tree young George allegedly fessed up to chopping down with a shiny new hatchet. Did that conversation ever actually happen? Or do we chalk it up as another American myth? Who knows, really? I mean, I'm literally Bigfoot. <laughs> At any rate, Augustine Washington died in 1743, when George was only 11. Whereupon George's half-brother Lawrence inherited the family home and renamed it Mount Vernon. In 1748, Lord Fairfax of Cameron, a distant family member through Lawrence's marriage, hired George to help survey his vast lands in the Shenandoah Valley. Surveying, Washington found, opened opportunities to purchase land in the West. By the age of 21, he had already amassed several thousand acres of land. After his brother's untimely death in 1752, George became the executor and heir of Mount Vernon. As a land speculator, Washington had a natural interest in the ongoing contest for Western lands between Britain and France. So it was fitting that in 1753, the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, Robert Dinwiddie, sent Washington on a mission to Fort LaBeouf, <laughs> Fort LaBeouf in Northern Pennsylvania to expel the French from the area. Naturally, the French were not eager to cooperate. All the same, Washington would publish an account of his journey, which Dinwiddie sent to London, where it was reprinted and well received. The following year, Washington was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel, and in the Battle of Jumonville, Jumon Jumonville Glen, Washington led an attack against a small party of French soldiers, which, as it happened, would set off a nine-year conflict, now known as the French and Indian War. The attack earned Washington a promotion to Colonel, it also brought the French upon him in retaliation. He retreated to Fort Necessity at Great Meadows, where he was joined by Captain James McKay, who, holding a royal commission, officially outranked Washington. In the end, the pair were overwhelmed by the French and forced to surrender. Washington resigned from the army later that year, upset by the order that made provincial officers like himself subordinate to officers holding royal commissions like McKay. In 1755, however, he accepted a volunteer position as an honorary colonel, the personal aide-de-camp of General Edward Braddock, who was the British commander-in-chief in North America. Following an ambush by the French at the Battle of the Monongahela, during which Braddock was killed, Washington successfully orchestrated the escape of the remaining British force. As a reward, he was given command of the entire Virginia militia. Still, he continued to fight over seniority with officers holding royal commissions. Meanwhile, he was never given his own royal commission, and he resigned for good in 1758, disillusioned with the British army. Upon receiving command of the Continental Army at the age of 43, Washington emerged a wiser and humbler man. What had changed in the 16 intervening years? For one, he had become a husband and a father, having married Martha Dandridge Custis in 1759, Though he never had children of his own, Martha came with two from a previous marriage. Incidentally, she also came with 15,000 acres of prime land near Williamsburg, Virginia. Moreover, Washington was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses in 1758. Two years after that, he became a Justice of the Peace for Fairfax County. 
By the eve of the revolution, he was one of the wealthiest men in Virginia and had begun a massive expansion of Mount Vernon, which he oversaw himself. For a man who had once been determined to achieve military glory, these non-military responsibilities appear to have given him a measure of peace about his place in the world. Now a father and a community leader, other prominent Virginians began to seek out his opinions. He became a vocal critic of British taxation without representation and supported the retaliatory boycotts of British goods. Following the passage of the Intolerable Acts, he was elected one of the delegates from Virginia to the First Continental Congress. Upon his return home, he took command of the training of militia in Virginia in preparation for the possibility of war. After the battles of Lexington and Concord, he returned to Philadelphia for the Second Continental Congress, where, due in part to his experience in the French and Indian War, as well as the weight of his influence as a Virginian, he was unanimously elected Commander-in-Chief of all American forces in the colonies. A younger Washington might have received the position with a sense of arrogance or entitlement. The older Washington accepted it reluctantly, fearful of his inadequacy. Thankfully for the revolution, his sense of honor would not permit him to decline. Indeed, he believed he was called to the battlefield by a higher power. But as it had been a kind of destiny that has thrown me upon this service, I shall hope that my undertaking it is designed to answer some good purpose. He promptly headed for Boston, where he arrived two weeks after the Battle of Bunker Hill to take command of what he called the Glorious Cause. If you want to know more about George Washington, his daring crossing of the Delaware, the infamous winter at Valley Forge, and much, much more, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, this is Bigfoot saying so long and save me a seat at your next campfire. Did you, did, did you chop down my, you see the jackalope? This is why no one wants you in charge of their insurrection.